In this video, we're going to talk about this little nifty number. This is a USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 hub from OWC. This is something I've been looking for for quite a while now, and I do believe this has only just come out. What's special about this is if you sacrifice the one USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port on your particular device, it's actually a splitter, splitter, a splitter, or an enabler, and it will give you more on the other side. In the past, you'd get a hub like this, which is basically just USB-C, granting you more USB, the old school USB ports, and maybe some HDMI, SD card slots, and then a pass-through USB-C. So you don't actually get more ports. And with my iMac that I currently have, all my ports are used up. I've got two USB-C ports and four USB-3 ports. So I see this device as helping me to stop cable swapping all the time and increase the expandability of this iMac. But not only is this discussion about the iMac, but we're also going to talk about the USB hub and how it works with an iPad Pro. So we're gonna talk about my two setups and then the myriad of devices that I can and cannot connect to this particular hub. First, let's briefly explain what you get with this. First, you get a USB 3.2 port. So it does provide some power to this, even though it's the older style USB 3 port. You get the port that you connect to your Mac or PC of choice. On the other side, you get a power port, Kensington lock, and then three, as I mentioned earlier, the other Thunderbolt ports. At a minimum, I've got about four USB-C devices right here, and I only have two USB-C ports. So this is gonna help greatly. And what I want is total peace of mind where I've got a spare USB-C cable where I can do my backups to my iPad. I can offload video from the Osmo or from the DJI drone, or I can charge this at the desk and I don't have to unplug anything in order to do that. That also means none of that can get in the way of either the time machine drives or any of the hard drives that are constantly backing up and saving information. I just need a workflow that is almost seamless when it comes to just not needing to plug and unplug devices all the time. When you buy the OWC product, you get the hub, as I've mentioned. You get a nice, nifty, seemingly high quality USB-C cable, and it actually says four on the front. It's got four on it, it's gotta be good. And you do get also this, which we'll talk about later. We've got our USB-C hub here. We've got this dumb device, which only requires power, so that's not really uh, going to be included. We've got a DJI drone that does connect and will transfer its video contents through the hub onto the iMac above. We've got a myriad of hard drives. These do connect with no problems. The super drive, even though the power output of the hub is higher than what this requires, because back in the olden days, no USB 2 hubs could handle the power of this. So you have to plug this directly into the Mac that you're using. It's still the case, sadly. This will not operate through this device, even though the power capabilities of this is so much better than the older USB hubs. This is the adapter to convert the old style Thunderbolt port into a USB-C for this particular device right here, which is the G drive. No problems getting that recognized and up and running and working with the iMac through this. The iPads will allow themselves to be backed up and you can get a charge to these devices. Simply put, it works with everything here except the SuperDrive. What is interesting is if you connect this hub to this hub, you do not get the power output required to power some of the devices at the end of this hub. For example, iPads will trickle charge if you turn the screen off, but won't do backups. They are constantly ejected and accepted, ejected and accepted by the macOS system. USB mice are fine. Microphones are fine. Low powered devices still operate as normal, but if it's anything demanding something higher, then forget about it. If we take a second to just talk about the iPad Pro 2018 working with the OWC hub, it's flawless. It's recognized by the system. In fact, all the hard drives over here will boot up into here and you can access those just as easily as I can on an iMac. In fact, all my video and audio production can be done on here with very little concern towards the limitations of using the iPad. Of course, you can plug in a mouse and a keyboard. The one port on the iPad is now not seen as a hurdle because the full functionality of the iPad is enhanced 
by allowing me to use all three of these extra hubs because I've got all my USB hard drives attached to it now. I can only assume that the newest iPad with Thunderbolt 4 will be even better, but the first redesign of the iPad Pro, it works perfectly with this. And as we're finding out with the latest reviews of the M1 iPad, the hardware is super capable. It's only the software that's holding us back. And already just with this and this together, I feel like I can be incredibly productive using just an iPad and I could get rid of my iMac if I wanted to, but I enjoy the big screen of the iMac. My point is I can see a future where my desktop setup is just the iPad or a tablet and then a hub to augment all the other necessities that I require for computing. When it comes to the overall product itself, there are some really nice things about this device. And then there are some things that I really don't like about this device. For my setup, obviously it might be different for yours. What I really like about it is obviously it's small. Second, it works. Everything works. All the hard drives, the iPads, as I said, the microphone, all the USB devices, no problems. And the fact that everything works on the iMac and then I can bring it over to the iPad as well, that's just amazing. There is another little touch that I like and it's this here. You know, when you've got loads of devices plugged in on standby and they've all got a little red light and they're basically a disco. Well, this device is like any other. As soon as you plug power into it, the OWC logo lights up and it's pure white, which can seem annoying, but then it also turns blue when you've got devices connected to it. So it's actually, it's got some utility to it, but you can get rid of it. You can turn it off and you can do that simply by pressing the recessed button in here and you dim down the lights on top. And that is really nice of OWC to go the extra distance just to accommodate us because there's no power button on this. There's no on off. Once you plug this in, it's on. So it's very static as a device. Now the downside is the slick ass marketing. I mean, look at it. It's really tiny. It's perfect, isn't it? It would seem to suit every desktop setup. Well, there's two problems. And that's the power adapter. And the fact you need a kettle cable to get this bad boy up and running. Now, I understand why, because this is channeling 110 watts of elastic trickery. It's a shame though, that this switching adapter is very evocative of early 2000 laptop power adapters as well. And what does it say about a third party company that's catering uh, that has catered historically very well to Mac users. And then you get this, whereas Mac users care about the little details. Some of us are upset, I'm not, that the new iMac, the M1 iMac, has its power adapter outside of the iMac now because Apple have insisted on getting that screen to be 11 millimeters thin. And now you've got to put it downstairs underneath the table, so to speak. Uh, but it's still kind of elegant compared to something like this. And I only wish either you could make this thicker and pop it in, but then I understand that the failure of this negates buying a new one of these. But I just wish there was something that could be done about this to make this more elegant, because as it stands, it's kind of ridiculous, especially when you go on the website, you don't see this. They hide this like Apple used to hide the iPhone 6 camera bump. But then on the flip side, who does this cater to? This caters to power users like myself who just want the utility. I'm not sure I actually believe that because some of us want great utility, but also the aesthetics that go along with it. I don't know. You tell me how you think about that. The other quibble that I have with this is the placement of the power port. As I said earlier, it's on the front. I think it's on the front. I'm not sure. You decide with the three USB four ports. And I've realized I can put this facing this way with the three USB four ports coming at me. But that does mean that the power is hanging off my desk now. And the USB four cable is coming off at the back here to go into the back of the iMac. You can see the placement is already weird. I don't know why, just for aesthetic purposes, why this isn't here. But anyway, luckily I have an iMac 
and it's sitting here like that and that will suffice for me but if you've got a laptop it can be awkward much in the same way that when you wear headphones it's the left side i think or the right side i can't remember i don't have those wired headphones anymore but wired headphones have the cord 99 percent of the time on one side of the ear you try plugging that into a macbook pro and many times apple have put the headphone jack on the wrong side so your cable cord from the headphones has to wrap around the it's something akin to that and that means that the power cable is facing me and i've never come across an instance with a device where the power cable is facing me now you could say jonathan you're facing it the wrong way around okay so let's face it the other way around i've only got one usb port facing me and i want hot swappable cables either way this is going to give me a cable facing towards me and I, I don't like that. I would prefer if everything that was going to connect to the Mac or offer power be on the backside. But I also have an iPad. So I can kind of relate to laptop users as to how this is going to work out. But there we are, as I said, something to take into consideration. Those are only minor things considering what it affords, what it grants me back and I'm afforded the luxury of not being able to want to unplug anything ever again.